on the title. As he knocked down the butcher oh. on his back. Hello and welcome to the biggest fight car of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live in the Netherlands, more specifically right on the water and beautiful Rotterdam, the Netherlands inside the Ahoy. And tonight is going to be a massive fight. Three prelims, six fights on the main card, including four world title fights. That's why we call this Glory Collision. Hello, my name is Todd Grisham alongside the first ever Glory Hall of Famer, Joseph Baltolini. And top to bottom, there's no doubt, this is the best we have to offer. Well, with Collision, we always bring out our best. And tonight, no difference. We got all the big boys out tonight and almost all of our weight classes. So I'm ready. Let's show you what we have in store for you. We start with three prelim fights, including a Croatian fighter. And for those that don't know, Croatia's national soccer team plays tomorrow in the UEFA Nations League final. A lot of Croatians going to be here, Joe. About half the audience here to watch Plazabat, but you know they're going to be cheering for Kedvez as well. Yeah, and he's a fun little fighter to watch, and he's got a good fighter in Pelkis to, to match that energy that he has. But keep an eye on this heavyweight fight. Nabil Kabab, we've seen here. He's just a fantastic big fighter to watch. So talk has other plans for him, but that's an exciting one. And then coming up at 8 p.m. local time, 2 p.m. Eastern, it's our main card, Glory Collision 5. These two fights are the only non-title fights, Joe, but they're still great. We got three versus seven and three versus five. Yeah, incredible. If you know how Michael Boapea fights, you're going to be excited. He's such a young, talented fighter. Everyone's exciting to watch, but I'd also keep an eye on Ibrahim El Bouni. He was undefeated in our rival series here, stepping up to fight Micheletti, which he wants title implications, hopefully, in the future. Now for the four world title fights, two of them interim, two of them full time. Welterweight title on the line. Indy Similar defending against Jay Overmere. This is a rematch from another organization a couple years ago. That fight was razor close. We expect the same tonight. Then the middleweight title, Donovan Visa versus the man who gives out sleeping pills and Sirkan Azkaglian. Now we move to the other world title fights on the card, Joe. How about the light heavyweight interim title between Tariq Kababez and Mohamed Ami? Oh yeah, there was a little bit of tension and friendship beef that happened leading up to this fight, but Amin, just very confident, had a great performance in his debut against Dute. He's anything but wants to be humble. He's coming out to take the shine from Tank, but Tank's a fighter who's a fun, aggressive, and you don't want to miss when he fights. And much more on our main event, the heavyweight interim title, Plazabad versus Asaro. That's Croatia versus Nigeria. I know what you're asking now. How do I watch Collision 5 coming up? At the top of the next hour, well, here's how you do it. If you're in the United States, go to gloryfight.com. Here in Netherlands, of course, we have a great partnership with Videoland. And if you're doubting where to watch, just go to gloryfights.com. That has all the information that you could need. Now, let's hone in on these title fights. First up, the welterweight championship, Similier versus Overmere. Yeah, this has to be one of the most technical fights you can watch in kickboxing. They have fought before, and it was a close technical fight, and this is why this fight's really exciting for the rematch. Both has improved, but Similier, just been a dominant champion. Here you see him fight Myrtle Grunhardt, and kickboxing fans know the veteran in Grunhardt, but Similier just was able to dominate, play with him, and just find his shots. Just a talented fighter who's gonna be very difficult to beat. Yeah, he really put his stamp on proceedings by beating one of the best welterweights in glory history, and he dominated from start to finish. As for his opponent, since coming to glory, Joe, he hasn't been beaten and has looked like a king. Yeah, and he's coming in with this nickname, The Matrix, and you can see through his fighting style, he's constantly switching stances, bringing you unique combinations. He's unorthodox. He'll hit you with kicks on the outside, good boxing on the inside. Just an incredible, talented fighter. Will this look much like their first fight? Both men say no. Yeah, I'm better now. I'm better than him. Uh, it's two years uh, that we fight. I'm an all, an, an all other J, and uh, I'm gonna win in the third or the fourth round for sure. <laughs> I don't know where I take that from because uh, the first fight he never hit me clean. Just I don't know how he's gonna try to hit me clean this time. But uh, let him think that, and uh, I go and prove the the other side. 
So this is a rematch, Joe. Who do you give the edge to, the champ or the challenger? Well, I think I still got to give the edge to the champ. Semilir, even in that first fight, looked like a little bit of edge ahead, but him being the champion, him building that confidence, I'm going to give him that edge. So that's the story from the welterweight division. Let's move up a division now, and it's the middleweights. The return of the nearly unbeatable-looking Donovan VC. Only one loss in his professional career, but he take, takes on this man in Serkan Oskogan from Turkey, Joe, that just doesn't want to win, wants to knock you out. Yeah, he's all about putting sleeping pills, knockouts, exciting fighter. But let's talk about Donovan Visa here because, to me, he has to be one of the most technical kickboxers in all of the weight divisions. The way he puts his combinations together, the way he changes levels, he can box and be slicks, and he can hit you from all angles, all stances. So, to me, Donovan has to be one of the best kickboxers on the planet right now. As for Serkan Azkaglian, Joe, watch what he does here to Sergey Braun, a man who we thought might beat him. Yeah, and when you talk about kickboxing, Azkaglian's the fighter that you want to show fighters. I mean, he comes in, he's aggressive, he wants to get finishes, and he's not content unless he knocks you out. But you can see here, he just comes from his southpaw stance, just blasting shots at you. And even though he is the challenger, Sergey Azkaglian is full of confidence. Because I'm the greatest in the division. Why, why are you the greatest in the division? Because I have the shots, I have everything what people are watching for. I have the knockouts, I have the fighting heart, I have the spirit, I have everything what, they're, what they are buying for, their tickets. I am the man who they want to see. But if he wants the title shot, he's a knockout fighter, I ain't a knockout fighter, I ain't a real champion because I don't go for the knockout, go for the kill. But uh, I'm a very diverse fighter, you know, I, I can use all of my uh, techniques. I'm uh, technical, explosive, uh, smart, flexible, so maybe that, that's why. And, he go, and his fights are much shorter, he goes for the knockout. And uh, that's not just my style, you know, if it comes, it comes. And if I got to win on points, I win on points, that's my, my style. Visa, the champion, is the favorite tonight, Joe. How does Oscar Glyon beat him? Well, I think it's going to be early pressure that he's known for. I mean, he's going to come out, be aggressive, because on paper, in the early parts of the fight, Oscar Glyon has the advantage because of that blasting style. But Wisa, the way he comes forward, the way he pressures, he tends to do better as the fight progresses. All right, let's talk about our light heavyweight interim fight, which is pretty interesting. The champ pulled out on Monday, so Tariq Kabab is in tears spoke to his, what he thought, really good friend Muhammad Amin on the phone. Amin said, oh, that stinks, sorry, buddy, and then immediately blasts Tariq on social media, calling for him to fight it. Tariq felt he had to take the fight. He is not happy about that. A lot of bad blood in our light heavyweight interim championship. Let's move now to the heavyweights, ladies and gentlemen. That's why we're here. That's why half this arena will be cheering for Croatia's Antonio Plaza. Bob. Yeah, you talked about friends, but these two are teammates, but they did not treat this fight camp like teammates. They say it's separate, and they both want knockouts. So for me, this is the fight you got to really stay locked in for because if you look at the Croatian Antonio Plazabot, he's patient. He's going to walk you down slowly, but when he unloads, he tries to take your head off. And look at these aggressive combinations he can throw. The way he rips the body, goes downstairs. He's all about knockout power. And Plazabot says he doesn't consider it a win unless he scores a knockout. He promises to give us another one here tonight, but so too does his opponent, Tariq Asara, who got two in one night the last time we saw him. Oh yeah, they're both Mike Jim's fighters, so that's their style. They're gonna come out, they're gonna try to decapitate you with all good power shots, and Cookie no different. He's long, he's rangy, he doesn't have the experience that Plaza Bad has, but anytime he touches you, and if he can put his combinations together, he's dangerous. So tonight, the interim heavyweight championship of the world on the line, and the winner gets Rico. It will be very important for me to have this world title because I will be the first Nigerian heavyweight kickbox champion. So that's where the legacy starts. And after that, I have to face the big boy. So, I mean, being now in this moment of my life, of my career, it means a lot to me. And what, like I said, it's the start of a big legacy. Yeah, yeah, that means I need to be like on 200%, 100%, it's, it's too low. I need to not pre perform the best ever, but I need like to, how to say, annihilate the opponent, like literally walk through him like the baddest possible scenario, like give the greatest show ever and then the party continues. Todd. 
Todd, I'm not very big on predictions, but one thing I am going to predict is that main event does not go to the ending. I mean, Antonio Plaza bought even saying, he's like, sometimes the title, I don't even care about it. I want excitement, I want show, and I want knockouts. All right, so that's coming your way as the main event on the main card. But right now, let's start our prelims. Three fights to get to, and we send it into the ring now. And Mr. Tim Hughes. Hello, Rodder de Welcome to the biggest night of kickboxing in the world for 2023. Tonight, nine fights on the card, 14 countries represented, and of course, four title fights in the welterweight, middleweight, light heavyweight, and heavyweight divisions as Glory presents Collision 5. Before the night is done, every seat in the house will be filled. A sold out Rotterdam Ahoy! Before we get to the first of three preliminary bouts this evening, let me bring out our four beautiful Glory girls, Stephanie, Bella, Anna Maria, and Tara! One more time, how about a big hand for the Glory Girls here in Rotterdam tonight? The first of three preliminary bouts is scheduled in the lightweight division and scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Both will be making their debut here in Rotterdam tonight. Please welcome Marix Pelsis. If she ain't, she got to go. Yeah. Tell her don't waste my time. Police wanna stop me, search my clothes. Yeah. Tell her don't waste my time. If it ain't money, I ain't involved. Merrick's Pelsis, 10 and 2, five knockouts, making his glory debut. Born in Latvia, but now living and representing the United Kingdom. Joe, what do you know about him? Well, he's a, a very unique fighter. He fights not your traditional style with the high guard. He's very elusive. He'll mix things up. And one of the things I like about his style is his ability to mix in spectacular offense. He mixes his knees really well. But to me, being a traditional martial artist, I love that he mixes in his spinning back kick. And at one point of all of his finishes, he has seven finishes via the spinning back kick. Yeah, he said he's nicknamed the Dream Killer because he beat four unbeaten foes in a row with a spinning back kick and they said look you're killing all these guys dreams and it's stuck of course the dream crusher is michael Duke. but tonight we focus on pelsis the dream killer Now make his opponent feel welcome. It's Andre Kedvez. So Croatia is in the house. He's the only other Croatian fighter on the card tonight besides the main event, Antonio Plazabot, but he'll get a nice ovation here in a minute, making his glory debut. Fighting out of Dakovo, Croatia, in Blitz Gym. Yeah, he's a, a fun fighter to watch, especially with his pressure style, good combinations. Really good at mixing his kicks and knees, and he's a low kicker with a lot of his finishes coming by way of low kicks. AK-47, he's called, obviously his initials. Andre Kedvez, and then the 47. I think he's going to finish his career with 47 wins. <laughs> I don't know. Here's our glory tale of the tape, sponsored by Unibet. Kedvez, 26 years old, two years older than Pelsis. Both men, similar height and similar reach. It's Croatia versus the United Kingdom. The professional experience, the edge going to Kedvez. And 12 fights for Pelsis, but asking him about his experience, he's got over 100 amateur fights, so 12 professional, over 100 amateur. 
Here are Glory's rules, if you're not familiar. Three rounds, three minutes each. Punches, kicks, and knees are the legal strikes. Three knockdowns in a round or four in the fight result in a TKO. Belts tonight will be scored using the following prioritized criteria. Started with knockdowns, followed by damage, then the number of clean scoring strikes with spectacular techniques, followed by normal scoring strikes. If there's no clear advantage, judges look for aggression. Open scoring. Five judges will score tonight's fights. Ten-point must system in effect. Additional points are deducted for knockdowns or rules violations, and the scores will be shown on your screen after each round. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. He is an ISKA British and international champion. As a professional, 10 wins with two losses. Half of those wins coming by way of knockout. At 5 feet 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters, he weighed in at 140.1 pounds, 69.2 kilograms. He's here in Rotterdam tonight fighting out of Barnsley, Yorkshire, United Kingdom. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Merricks, the dream killer, Pelsis. Here now is his opponent, fighting out of the white corner, a European champion and a world champion in the last two years. His professional record, 18 wins with four losses. Seven of those wins coming by way of knockout. At 5 feet 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at fight time at 140.7 pounds, 69.5 kilograms. Fighting tonight out of Dakovo, Croatia. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Andre AK-47 Kevin. The third man inside the glory ropes, your referee, Fatih Mazin. Check your gloves. Okay, guys, respect the rule, respect my command, okay? Protect yourself during all the bout. Go back to your corner. Kedvez telling us yesterday, I will dominate this fight. I might start a little slow, but I will take over, and he will have no answers. Judge. Of course, Judge. Pelsis Judge. feels differently. Time. Says I can adapt fight. to any style, and that's what I'll do here. Yeah, you'll see Pelsis be a little bit more unorthodox with his fainting. His big, long punches, nice front kick there. Good answer from Kedvez, who's in the black shorts, Pelsis in the red. Yeah, Kedvez definitely has to be careful entering with those oh. rangy punches. Go! Fight! This is the glory debut for both these fighters. You know nerves are pouring through their veins right now. Nice knee from Pelsis. Yeah, you can see that unorthodox style of Pelsis. Overhand, scissor knees, there's that spinning back kick. It touched the liver too. That's where you get to finish if you can touch the liver with that back kick. Break, step. Both men trying to get those knees Break, step back. up. Fight. Yeah, that's where I think Pelsis is gonna have a good advantage, hiding his knees behind his punches. Stop. Where Kedvis is gonna be more of that traditional punch Fight. to kick style. Who looks more comfortable? Well, to me, it's Pelsis. The way he's kind of just flowing and bouncing and fainting. He's got that relaxed boxing style pull counter there, circling his way out. I love that low lead hand of Pelsis. Look at that. Yeah, Kedvis is going to have to pressure. He's got to stay close to Pelsis now. But you can see Pelsis' boxing is more traditional boxing with that low guard. Uses his head movement a little bit more than most kickboxers. No Fight! Nice counter from Pelsis there as well. Oh, good overhand. Good exchange here. Yeah, Pelsis is all about spectacular offense. Fight. Good start to his glory career. There you go, Kedvez is having a little bit more success now, slowly working his way in. He's certainly in fantastic condition. Both these fighters don't have an ounce of fat on them. There's the low kick that Kedvez loves. 
You know, it's hard. It's hard to be five foot ten as both these guys are and still make featherweight. Yeah. Stop. Oh yeah. Fight. You can see just how long and rangy Pelsis is, but that spinning back kick's come like four times, and it's they're pretty accurate too. Good right hand scores for Pelsis. Whoa, good right hand there from Kedlis. And then a high kick as well. Good, strong close to the round for Kedlis. Fight! Whoa! Oh, spinning back fist! Dive! And that knee was after the bell. The referee lets it go. But Kedlis, close strong, may have won the round. Yeah, I mean, I still think maybe Pelsis did a little bit more, but Kedlis, very entertaining so far as we keep talking about. He's the AK-47. They're showing uh, his signature strike as a spinning back kick as well. But I know he likes a spinning back fist as well, so yeah. keep an eye out for both. And Remy Bonyaski, his role model, who's sitting right across the ring from us. So I know that's a big highlight for Kedbez that his hero's watching him. As for the dream killer, Pelsis, you've seen that spinning back kick. He threw it three or four times there in round one. And it's Mick Crossland, the UK legend who's training. There's that spinning back fist that Kedvez liked to finish strong here. Good pressure. I and mean, I think it's really about him coming close and trying to close that distance. All right, round two. Time. Look Fight. forward to seeing the judges' scores. See if they would agree with Joe or if they think maybe the Croatian did enough in the last 15 seconds. One gave it to Pelsis, the other three to Kedbez. Yep, Kedbez trying to get in there and pressure. That's his best strategy. How big are you on back fists, spinning back fists, Joe? Do you teach that a lot in your kickboxing class? Uh, not too much, because they're more dangerous. Because even with kickboxing, I don't love them, because usually you throw them when someone pressures, and then you hit the elbow a lot. I actually have a nice knockdown with a spinning back fist in my career, so I use them once in a while. Who'd you knock down with a spinning back fist? Uh, Kareem Gaji. Oh, yes. Glory it's 11. Okay. In Turkey? Stand up. No, Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. yeah, yeah. It's okay. Okay. Fight! Two minutes to go here in the second round. Brock! Yeah, better inside work from Kedvez now. Look, he's more confident in there now. Which is from that first round. Yeah, you can tell Pelsis likes Fight! to stand a little back in the, in the pocket. To be able to use those long arms. Yep. Kedvez doing the right game plan now. Ooh. Like him to chop those legs a little bit more. Oh, oh trade spinning back fist. And then a spinning back fist. I'm getting dizzy, Joe. <laughs> A lot of spinning. It's the most spinning we've seen Rick. in one flight. It's like I the, like it. The teacups at Disneyland. Oh, that was right oh. behind that. Another spinning back fist. Yeah, that was almost a, a, just a back fist, not a spin back fist. Nice little shifting footwork from Kedvez to get on the inside. Rick. Entertaining stuff. Yeah, take advantage of those spectacular offense points. There's the strikes yeah. landed yeah, yeah, by yeah, types. Yeah. Kedvez kick heavy. Pelsis punch heavy. Yeah, quickly, please. Okay, nice. We know the stay other here, Croatian will be stay punch here. heavy tonight. Bazaba. He'll throw an occasional low oh, kick. Yeah, you were joking yeah. with him, I think, in Time fight week. Fight. Like, are we going to see kick fighting from you? What did he say? Maybe one or he two? He said, I'll, I'll throw in an occasional low kick, but. Oh. oh, nice left there on the inside from Pelsis. And now they're throwing bombs. Yeah, that low kick after the punches. Well done. Stop! Pels is very Stop. awkward fighter to get in inside on. He's got to keep using his fainting because Kedvez just walking in now. No threat. Rick! Body kick there from Kedvez. You fight. Very strong ground for Kedvez now. He's found his momentum. Oh, a 
You got to keep that head up. You'll eat a big Ooh. knee. And nice exchange there at the end of the round for Kedvez, who's doing nice. very well in his glory debut. Yeah, fantastic. Good pressure now, good work on the inside. Worked his way in successfully. Kedvez just slowly tracking, walking his way in. Doesn't want to give Pelsis too much room. So he's intelligently walking his way in, looking for good counters, and then exchanging spins for spin. That happens a lot in fights. Usually when one fighter spins, the other one starts wanting to get it back. It's the fighter mentality. All right, so what's the strategy here in round three for Pelsis? Well, Pelsis just going to have to stay rangy, stay long. He's got to be first. He can't wait till Kedvis gets on the inside. GloryShot.com, your destination for all the latest Glory merchandising, including signed event posters and the latest sweats, shirts, hats, and more. That's GloryShot.com. Time, fight! So it seems that Marcus Pelsis, Marcus Pelsis is going to have to step up his game here in the third round. Might even need a knockdown as all five judges scored that second round for the Croatian. Yeah, he's got to have B first, try to get going. That's like he's doing now. He's initiating first, looking to counter a little bit more. Keep Kedvis away from that inside position. Marix Pelsis. I kept saying Marcus. Marix Pelsis. Pelsis is still dangerous with his knees and his overhand. Yeah, you saw the strike count. Pelsis has the activity, but the damage, it seems, is being done by Kedves. Ooh, good step in left knee for Kedves. Nice entry. Just missing with that overhand right, and then they sit in the pocket. Is that what Pelsis might need to do at this point? Yeah, I think he's got to use his knees a little bit earlier because you know Kedvez is coming in. He's usually his hook to set up the knee, but maybe something on to meet Kedvez coming in. Quick glance at the clock for Pelsis, and again, a spinning back fist scores. Well done from Kedvez. Yes, the setup was the best part of that. His step through with it with, with a nice kick feint. And another glance up from Pelsis, Joe. Does he want out of there? Well, I still think he needs got to work. I mean, I think he's content moving, but he's got to scrap out this minute and a half if he wants to get something going. Rick! You're either looking at the clock for two things. One, because you're so tired, you're counting down the seconds. Or two, you know you got to do something. You're checking to see how much time you got left. Yeah, good point. Stop. But I think Kedvis is just fight. fighting the right fight. He made adjustments in that first round, kept the fight in close range. Ooh. Now looking great on the inside, not giving Pelsis much to work with. He's swinging this with a spinning back fist, though. Like you said, you're very open. Yeah, but I liked how he followed it up there to keep that pressure coming forward. Rick! Stop! Fight! 40 seconds for the Brit to pull off something special. But Kedvis just looks like he's in too good a shape. Yeah, sharp, technical. Oh, got him again. The way he sets up his spinning back fist with his stance switching. Yeah, he's definitely flowing well now, confidently. Who knew that Kedvis would outspin Pelsis tonight? <laughs> Pelsis known for his spinning attack. Nice low kick there, too, from Kedvez. Chopping away, picking apart. He's gone everywhere. Upstairs, downstairs, to the legs. Fight. Last flurry. And they'll hug it oh. out, and that will do it. What a debut from Andre Kedvez fighting out of Dakovo, Croatia. Multi-time Croatian national champion making his debut at the premier stand-up fight organization in the world, and it went extremely well. The official decision when we return.
on the fight against Antonio Plazibot. Man, that's gonna be the hardest fight in my career. We're enemies from now on till the fight is done. Mohammed Ali! Champion of the world, Andy Savalier! Jay Olderman! We welcome you back to the Ahoy Arena here in Rotterdam, the Netherlands. Jump into our highlights from our opening prelim. Yeah, Pelsa started pretty good with his unorthodox style, mixing in different attacks, but Kedves slowly started working his way in, finding combinations on the inside, and just did great work. His confidence built as the fight went on. You saw him mix good offense, upstairs, downstairs, chopping the legs, a lot of spinning back fists. Pels is never out, really trying to get some offense on the outside, but the good setups of the spinning back fist, just Kedvez was better tonight. Well, Kedvez told us, I will dominate him in every way in this fight, and according to the judges' scores, he seemed to do it. Although punches belong to Pelsis, 90 of 189, but Joe, I know you, you put a lot more emphasis on kicks. 44 landed compared to just 10. Yeah, even the punches too, I think the damage came a little bit more from Kedvez's side, but again, Pelsis still looks promising, so hopefully we get to see him back. Let's get the decision now. We go back into the ring and Tim Hughes. Ladies and gentlemen, after th three rounds of kickboxing, we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's look at the totals from our five ringside judges. One judge scores about 29-28. The four remaining judges all have a 30-27, a unanimous decision. All for your winner, Andre Kedvez. Joe, did, did you expect it to be that easy for him? No, I mean, I didn't know how well he would do against that unorthodox style that Pelsis has, but I thought he did great, good promise. The way he pressures, the confidence he has. He has fought bigger names in the past, one that we recently seen, Enrico Kale. So he's fought some big guys before, so let's see how he climbs these rankings. Yeah, we know we'll see him again soon. He's worked as a physical therapist in a hospital before, so he'll have to put that career maybe on the back burner for a year or two as he tries to make his way up the ranks here in glory picking up win number 19 in his young career Ladies and gentlemen, we next turn our attention to Glory's welterweight division, again about scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Please welcome to the ring, Edward Gafanku. Edward Gafenku, a man of few words. Uh, he doesn't speak English, Joe, just Romanian. But even with a translator there, it was one or two word answers. He just kept saying, I will talk in the ring tomorrow with my fists. Yeah, he's, he's known for his pressure style, his aggression, nicknamed the Blitz on how fast he can put his opponents down. But talented fighter making his debut tonight, and he loves his arm kick. So expect him to smash the arms, the body, and the legs. And now, please welcome his opponent, Jagili Kamara. A lot of confidence oozing 
from Daigle Kamara, Joe, fighting out of Paris, France. You know he wants to be on that September 9th card with Bader Hari in Paris. Yep. But first things first, he's got to beat this tough Romanian. Yeah, and he's a, an exciting fighter to watch. And if you watch some of his highlights, you can just see him knocking everybody out with these scissor knees. He'll catch you with it from all different ranges. And he's a good balance. You'll see him mixing his boxing and his kicks very well. Just a fun, spectacular fighter to watch. Describes himself as the perfect mix of a kicker and a puncher. Tonight's tales of the tape are always brought to you by our proud partner, Unibet. Here we go, 30 years old, both of these men. Kamara, taller and longer. Joey's gonna have nearly a seven inch reach advantage. Jeez. With the professional experience, seven fight edge going to Kamara. Still both very exciting fighters, but Gafenku, 20 fights, 71% KO ratio. Let's see if the Blitz can get it done again tonight. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this battle of the welterweights is scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, standing on my left and fighting out of the black corner. He is a two-division champion who turned pro in 2017 and arrives in Rotterdam on an eight-fight winning streak. His professional record, 17 wins with three losses. 12 of those 17 wins have come by way of knockout. At 5 feet 10 inches tall, 1.78 meters, he weighed in at 155.1 pounds, 76.6 kilograms. Fighting out of Romania, ladies and gentlemen, it's Edward the Blitz Gafanku. Here now is his opponent standing on my right and fighting out of the white corner, a 2019 World Cup champion on a four-fight winning streak of his own. His professional record, 22 wins, four losses, one draw, and nine career knockouts. At six feet, one inch tall, 1.86 meters, he weighed in at 154.5 pounds, 76.3 kilograms. He fights tonight out of Paris, France, ladies and gentlemen, Introducing Jagili Kamara. And your referee for this bout, Jan Franca. Fighters coming up. Okay, shake your hands, everyone. Three rounds, three minutes. Glory rules. Listen my comments. Good luck. Back to the corners. Joe, this is like an international house of pancakes. We've got another. We've got Paris, or we've got France now versus Time. Romania. Our first, first fight was Croatia Take. versus England. Here we go. Kamara in the black trunks. Gafenku in the white. Kofenko had a, a viral video doing a tornado kit from 2019, which is spectacular to see. I highly recommend you Google it. Yeah, uh, voted on by many as the knockout of the year in kickboxing in 2019. Oh, incredible. Yeah, I don't think the tornado kick is something you teach at Bazooka Shows, is it? It takes well, like nine seconds to throw that kick. Well, sometimes if you have a Taekwondo background, it's easy. Well, you're a black belt Taekwondo. Yeah. Is that an easy kick for you? For me, yes, it is. One, two, three. Yeah, Gafenko also has some pro boxing experience. 3-0 and as a boxer, all finishes. Boy, you can see he puts everything into those punches. Yeah, Kamara playing a, a more defensive style fight, letting Gafenko work off of his guard a little bit, but watch these little quick knees he's gonna throw. It's coming soon. Gilly Kamara, part-time paramedic, which always makes me say something like, if he hurts his opponent, he can resuscitate yeah, him. I was waiting for it. <laughs> there it is. Hey, hey, and I mentioned September 9th in Paris. We're headed back. Glory 88. Return of Badr Hari taking on James McSweeney. Franco just loading up on his punches. Oh, nice Time. left there from Kamara, and it popped the mouthpiece of Gafenku out. Yeah, Gafenku's a power puncher. Wow. Good job at Kamara, staying defensive. Very technical. Kamara, no stranger to fighting Romanians. He said he's fought Time. them 
fight many times, amateur and pro. Nice slip and rips from Gafenko. <laughs> Who would you say is your most favorite French kickboxer of all time? Oh, uh, honestly, probably Cedric Dumbay. Seeing how good he did and dominated that welterweight division. He's up there for sure. Jerome LeBanner is up there as well. Good left on the inside from Gafinku. He wants knockouts. And he's got good pressure fighting style too. The way he sits in, great counters as well. Every time Kamara kicks, he's got a, an overhand right or a left hook ready to go. Nice upstairs, downstairs work with his hands. Great start from him so far. Trying for that high kick. Ooh, nice angle out. Kamara waiting a little too long to attack. Gafenko looking for a way in. You can see he's fainting, just trying to get between oh. that guard and that right hand nearly did it. His counters are great. He's just getting his head off line and ripping good counters. See, it? he just waits for you to counter every time. Look, he touches you, touches you. Even if Kamara attacks, he'll come right back. And look at that guard Oy. manipulation as he pulled the hands down to land the right hand. Great opening round for Edward Gafenko. Yeah, very technical, smart boxer. Not loading up on every punch. Here we have Jagili Kamara representing France. Signature strikes his knees. I'm surprised. If you watch his highlights, that scissor knee comes up in the middle very quick and fast. So for me, he's got to be a little bit more offensive now as the fight goes on. In Edward Gafenko's corner, his father is always there. We asked him how he felt about it. He said, I hate it. I don't want to be in the corner. I don't like seeing him get hit. I don't want to be there. I want to be sitting at home watching him. But Edward says, no, Pops, if you're not there, I'm not fighting. So, so neither one of them are happy with this situation, but that's the way it's got to go. Yeah, difference in personality. Father so social where Gafenko just sat there and looked mean and smiled. Yeah, the dad does the talking, the son does the punching. Yeah, but Gafenko Great job in this first round. Slipping, ripping, getting his head off line. Great counters. And a beautiful scissor knee to end that first round. So Kamara's probably hoping, he's probably hoping that Gafenko used a lot of energy in that first round. Yeah, that could have been his strategy because already now he's a little bit more aggressive or his corner maybe lit a fire, but Kamara needs to do something. He needs to fight back. First round sweep for Gafenko. Yeah, look at that head movement. It just angled out on the outside. There we go. A little Lomachenko in that footwork. <laughs> I was going to say that. Yeah, a little angled shuffle. I like those light touches on the guard. Touch, 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 and then boom, he rips that body very tough. Upstairs goes Gafenko, and he is just bullying Kamara right now, who just can't find a way out. Yeah, I think Gafenko's boxing is just too slick right now. Powerful, sharp good angles, and even when he counters, he takes an angle before he counters. Just sharp footwork. 12 knockouts in his 17 wins for Gafinko, and look at the distribution. 51 punches have landed, only seven for Kamara. Yep, Gafinko's being first and last. So eventually you're gonna start countering those. Yeah, he doesn't let you get off. Kamara better with his angle. Oh, There's those knees. He walked right into a right hand. But Ooh. now he's going to try and press. Nice uppercuts, head kicks, and finally Kamara waking up a little bit. Now we got ourselves a fight. That was a nice little sequence there from Kamara with some good stance switching, mixing his stances, getting to the back leg of Gafenko. Body shot on the inside. Take. Kamara. You could tell Gafenko did not like walking backwards, did he? No, I mean, when you move backwards, that's when Kamara picks it up. Oh, nice angle out. There's that knee. It connected right on the chin. You could see Gafenko biting down on his mouthpiece. Yeah, it only takes one of those knees. Here comes Kamara. The body's hurt of Gafenko. Oh, and, and he's going to go down. What a turn of events here Two. in the Netherlands. Three. He must Four. have found the body. Gafenko Five. put his hands down. Six. Kamara found that knee to the Seven. face. 
He may not turn no, around, Joe. Um, it's over! Do you believe this? Kamara, who was completely dominated from the opening bell, turns things around and stops Edward Gafinku. Gafinku got a little too confident with his hands in his boxing. And then Kamara reminded him, hey, I got my knees. That's what I'm known for. And then he was able to find that finish. A lot of relief there because it wasn't looking great for him, but that's good experience there from Kamara. Wow. Joe, that must have been some body shot because Gafenko is a tough customer. Yeah, it must have been. Oh, a little knee up there. Let's see what it actually stemmed from. Oh, is that scissor knee to the body? Let's see if he slows down from here. Yeah, oh, a second body kick probably just added up to it. And then he was able to just mix his combinations. Kick. The front kick, too, with an accumulation of body shots that slowly put Gafenko leaning forward. And then all of a sudden, he bit the nice left hand. Oh, oh. that knee, my word, on the temple. Especially as he was dipping, he did a beautiful oh. gallop step to be able to connect with that knee. Man, what a finisher. Those knees are something else from Kamara. Ale la blue, France stepping up. In our second fight of the night, what a win for Kamara. We make it official next. from now on till the fight is done. Mohamed Ami! Tariq Kabame! Middleweight champion of the world, Donovan Misa! champion of the world, Andy Semelin! Jay Olderman! We are back in the Rotterdam, and what an exciting finish to this contest. Yeah, and in the beginning part of this fight, Gafenko looked incredible. Good boxing, very technical. Really showed his, his high-level footwork, his ability to touch and mix rips, but Kamara started to pick things up, started attacking the body. Once he got aggressive, you've seen the damage he can do. The way he mixes that body, then into that knee to the head. Just a fun fighter to watch, and we warned you about his knees. He oh. kind of kept them hidden until that second round, and then he just found them with great success. How he didn't go down to the canvas after that knee, I'll never know. Here are the final strike count statistics, and you can see Kamara with those kicks. They started adding up and adding up, and don't forget about those knees, especially the last one. Wow. When you're looking at the zone, it's Gafenko really head punching a lot. Maybe a few rips to the body, but it was more Kamara mixing up his attack, attacking the legs, and then at the end of the day, all that mattered was that big punch that led to the knees. Ladies and gentlemen, you watched it as it happened. This fight comes to an end with an official time of 2 minutes, 24 seconds of that second round and ends by technical knockout for your winner, Jagili Kamara. So Jagili Kamara wins his glory debut. Joe, what would you 
How would you describe that performance? I mean, very patient at first, but spectacular at the end of the day. But even in our pre-fight interview, I asked him, was like, you've seen the welterweight division. Where do you fit in? He goes, I'm easily in the top five. He feels he's really getting ready to hang with the guys like Overmere and Semelier. So he feels he's ready. Let's see how fast he can move. Some legends in the house tonight. Not many bigger than that one. Bader Hari. Yep. Anytime he's in the building, you get this extra little nerve and atmosphere. We'll see him, of course, in September as he makes his return to glory in Paris against James McSweeney. Ladies and gentlemen, the last of our three preliminary bouts is scheduled in the heavyweight division, scheduled for three three-minute rounds. And first to make his way to the glory ring is Vladimir Tok. Vladimir Tark, and you talk about a scary looking dude, Joe. I don't want to meet this guy in a dark alley. No, but he's definitely been waiting for this opportunity for a long time. He's fought in many organizations across the world, but this is the one he's most excited for. So much experience. This will be his 70th professional fight. He has 28 knockouts. Born in Russia, now living in Germany, Duisburg, Germany. 55% knockout ratio. Said he's been waiting a long time for this opportunity and promises to make the most of it. Yep, he's coming for knockouts. He's a big puncher. He says, watch out for his left hooks. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please make him feel welcome. Nabil Kaha! Nickname the tank. We got two tanks on the card tonight. Maybe they'll fight one day. Tariq taking on Nabil. What do you think? Well, I think there are a big difference now with Kababez moving down to light heavyweight, but this tank here, Kahab, only 22 years old, still in school, and he's just keeps pressure. He knows how to use his side. He's got a huge Moroccan fan base behind him. He's confident, he's young. And he's ready to do big things in his heavyweight divisions. He's very vocal. He wants in that heavyweight tournament, the Grand Prix, at the end of the year. So he needs to impress Robbie Timmers tonight. He's already fought twice this year. One win, one loss. As for that loss, he said, I was too emotional. I'm a young boy. I've got to stay mentally strong. Our good friends at Unibet present this tale of the tape. Look at the age difference. Talk 12 years older than the tank. They're both six foot two. Kachab nearly 300 pounds. He's 293 compared to 227 for Vladimir. Kachab has two inch reach advantage. With professional experience, the big edge going to the older talk. 69 fights, but look at that knockout ratio. 55%, a lot of them coming from that left hook, but we've seen Kahab, we know how young and talented he is, so he's looking to blast through talk tonight. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this bout scheduled for three three-minute rounds in Glory's heavyweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. As an amateur, he won his first 50 fights and went on to become a 2015 heavyweight champion. His professional record, 51 wins with 18 losses, 28 of those wins coming by way of knockout. Standing six feet two inches tall, 1.88 meters, he weighed in at 227.4 pounds, 112.3 kilograms. Fighting tonight out of Duisburg, Germany, he is Vladimir Tork. His opponent fighting out of the white corner, set to make his third glory start. 
after a successful debut in Glory 83 in Essen. His professional record, 25 wins, four losses, one draw, and four career knockouts. He stands six feet, two inches tall, 1.88 meters, and he weighed in at 293.4 pounds, 144.9 kilos. Fighting out of Morocco and ranked number eight in the Glory World Rankings, here is Nabil the Tank Kaha. Third man inside the glory ropes, your referee is Edward Stryker. Okay, guys, listen. We're fighting three rounds of three minutes. You know the glory rules? There is no standing eight count. Protect yourself at all time and listen to my command. Tough gloves if you want. Back to your corner. Vladimir Talk, Nabil Kashaw. Judge, Judge Stein. Fight! Three rounds, heavyweight division. Just over 30 minutes to go until the start of Collision 5, coming up the top of the hour, as these heavyweights are wasting no time. Yeah, Kahab opening up with some big punches, Ray, nice exchanges. Ray, guys, with the big Ray, boys, listen. you gotta start holding your breath. Fight! Nice hard jab there from top. Despite Kajab's massive size, his cardio is pretty unbelievable. Yeah, and he knows how to use his size to wear you down, keep pressing you, and just keep mixing these great combinations. I love how he mixes his uppercuts and his low kicks. Beautiful. He even hopped on one leg to deliver that low kick. Yeah, Coach Saeed from SB Gym is very good with combinations, level changes. Good body shot from Tok. Break the back. Tok said, listen, he's a big, fat guy, but he's not strong. I am strong, and I'll knock him out. Oh, we'll find out now. <laughs> you can say what you want back then, but the Hobbs in there throwing back at you. A knee there from Vladimir Tork doesn't quite connect. Oh, punch the kick from Kaha. Beautifully done. Break! Watch out the elbow. Fight! No elbows, of course, in glory. Hey. <laughs> Liking this little footwork here. Right hand from Tork. Tork already breathing heavy. Yeah, Kahab's pressure will wear you out. As he counters back, he stays in your face, mixes levels, volume combination. It's not one punch power, but he's throwing four or five strike combinations. Four, yeah, there's your four hit combo. What would your target be on Kashab if you're tough? Where are you throwing your punches and kicks? Well, I'm looking for counter hooks. Oh, right hand really? snaps that, that mouthpiece out, and Corner. Edward Stryker, the referee. Corner. You're aren't you supposed to let the action die down, then grab the mouthpiece? No, well, I guess the timing of where it was. Uh, Edward Stryker decided he's one of our most experienced referees. Turn around, please. Watch out, uh, keep him you in. Tell right. Talk really appreciated that moment to catch his breath. Fight. But a great start to this fight for Kashad. Yeah, these combinations are fantastic. He's really opening up more, mixing his levels well. Good defense as well. Oh, Tom, he was about to throw a switched kick. Oh, good body kick from Tok. Yeah, Kahab keeps walking forward, though. That's what Tok needs to do, try to put things in combination. But Kahab likes to counter. And that'll do it for round one. Great start from the Moroccan. Yeah, Kahab looking like a, a lightweight in there tonight, the way he's mixing his combinations. Here is the man known as the tank, and yeah, he does work with kids with autism. Spoke with him about that yesterday. He really seems to enjoy it. Feels like he's making a difference in the community. And of course, we all salute that. Yeah, of course, I worked with kids in the past, so I salute to that. 
his opponent from Germany, uh, Vladimir Tok, a veteran of kickboxing, MMA, and boxing. He's been all around the world, different sports, different organizations. But this was his dream to get here tonight. The pressure of Kahab has been the biggest difference in these combinations. They're just fantastic to see from, from a heavyweight. And not a small heavyweight from a big heavyweight like the Hobbit. It's that much more impressive. He's even jumping, spinning, uh, scissor knees. He's having fun. 293 pounder is the tank. Talk coming out hot. All five judges giving that to the bill. Oh, oh. The legs. The legs are given out for talk. Look at that speed of Kahab. Boy, he looked like Usain Bolt running over there. And he's just hammering down low. And again. That's what you call chopping the tree down. Right. Kahab only has four knockouts in his 25 wins. Oh, again, he keeps chopping. Good timing with that low kick. The foundation's still not good. Yeah, Kahab's going to have to go back to his boxing to get talk to sit there that's more success with the low kick set those kicks with punches right here now when he's heavy on the leg you go back after it Joe it's just so crazy that Kachab in his in such good physical condition in, in such good cardiovascular condition can still weigh that much yeah and he's not even breathing heavy keep pressing that speed when he even has you hurt him Prounces right on you. Look at these combos. See, once he mixes his punches with his kicks, that's when he's gonna get that low kick finish. Kachab told us his goal right now is to get in that end of year tournament. Right. The Stop Glory back. Heavyweight Fight. Grand Prix. All kinds of rumors of where that tournament's gonna be. Some big locations being mentioned. Nothing confirmed yet, but it will be the biggest card perhaps Glory's ever had. Let's see what Kahab can do with the tired top right now. Can he get back to that leg? Talk being pretty one-dimensional. He throws the one-two. Yeah, that's why Kahab just sits there high guarded and just counters back with these wicked. Oi! Can't do that. Nice little foot sweep though. No sweep. No sweep. Fight! That was a tricky little sweep. I will say this, Tolk looked like he was going to go down at the beginning of the round, but he's managed to stay on his feet. Yeah, he's surviving the low kicks. But him being aggressive helps him. If he just waits, that when Kahab can put these combos, that's what he has to do, counter back. Keep pressing. If he's going to eat a low kick, at least put three, four punches back out. Just fire out of that shell. Break! Stop back. Guys, listen, let's go. If I say back. Fight! Oh, the out comes the mouthpiece hey. again. I feel like they should have let that one go. Time. This is the second time. Make sure you watch Glory events 24-7. All you could want, ladies and gentlemen, that's on Glory's new Fast Channels. Visit glorykickboxing.com for more information. 26 minutes from now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the beginning of Glory Collision 5. Here's how to watch in your country. And if you don't see your country listed here, simply go to gloryfights.com for more information. Joe, Vladimir Tolk's got to do something dramatic. Yeah, he's got to look to counter. He's got to be first. But easier said than done than against the Kahab, who's on fire tonight. All the judges are in agreement. He's won both rounds. Break! 
strikes to Beck. 108 Fight. total landed strikes for a 300 pounder. Yeah, maybe a little bit slowing down now, but still, the way he's putting things together, when he opens up, top checking now, he knows the low kick's coming after the punches. Some feints there from Kahab. Now he got back to it. He checked the first one. Kahab said he ain't checking the second. Kahab would love to get a knockout on his resume in glory. Oh, they keep touching gloves. Talk almost gave him an overhand, right? Yeah, that body's wide open. Oh, Kahab. Loving the noises of Kahab. He's ready to go five rounds. Look at him. Oh, yeah. oh big hey. left hook. Listen to me. Don't <laughs> Gave him a little back. smile there. Fight. A little bit of swag coming from Kahab. <laughs> I like it. He doesn't think Tok can hurt him. And that's a good feeling, isn't it? Yeah. Nice high guard defense. Oh, nice on the way out the left. Yeah, low kick again. Jeez. Imagine if you could get some power into this guy's gloves. Yeah, you gotta think 22 years old. If he's the time he's 25, 26, even in his 30s, it's gonna be amazing to see him develop from such a young age. If he can stay focused, so confident, studying to be an architect, but too talented in kickboxing. Well, he's designed the perfect blueprint here tonight as snot comes flying out of the nose Break. of Vic Vladimir Tok. Fight! Break, working nice against Level changing. Fight! SB Jim Style doing a great job with Kahab's combinations, his body shots, his low kicks. Step back, guys. 20 Fight. seconds to go. What's more likely? Talk knocks down Kajab. Kajab knocks him out. <laughs> well, I think uh, it's going right down 10 seconds. I think it's just going to end with a blast. Right. Yeah, Talk is spent. Fight. Yeah. But give him credit. He went the distance. But tonight, belong right. to the Moroccan. No doubt about it. In the end, it was easy work for Nabil Kajab. We will make it official and hear from the Moroccan when we return. from now on till the fight is done. Mohamed Ami! Tariq Kabame! Middleweight champion of the world, Donovan Misa! Welterweight champion of the world, Andy Savalier! Jay Overman! We welcome you back 20 minutes away from Glory Collision 5, but let's relive the highlights from this heavyweight showdown. And Kahab. Combinations, level changing, leg kicks, scissor knees. He brought the full arsenal tonight. The way he was able to chop Tok's legs, that speed he brought, his combinations, the, the way he set up his kicks, to me, looked like a lightweight here in this fight. 
good conditioning, continued to press all three rounds. Very spectacular, fun fighter to watch at 22 years old to see him do this work spectacular. Fighting out of SB Gym and Utrex, perhaps the best performance we've seen out of Nabil Kashab. 114 punches landed, total 144, over double the work rate of Vladimir Tok. Strikes thrown per minute. Round one, 28.7, 20 point. He slowed down, but still outpaced the German. Good stuff from Morocco's tank. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout goes the distance, so we go to the judges' scorecard. Let's take a look at the totals. All five of our ringside judges see the bout and score the bout the same. 30-27, a unanimous decision. All for your winner, Nabil Kaha! I'm here with the fan favorite, Nabil Kahab. Man, it's got to feel good winning here in front of your fans in your first collision. Yes, I want to say first of all, Alhamdulillah, I've won. Ruby, where is the tournament? Bring me that. I told you. Come on. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I won. It was a, it was a good job, but uh, always have to be better. Yes. Well, I was had to check a couple of times to check if you were a heavyweight or a lightweight with those combinations, the way you went at it. How did you rate your performance tonight? Uh, <laughs> I trained with coach Said, and uh, we are working. So the combinations, it is his style, a little bit combination of my old gym. So it's good, it's good. And uh, props to Said. Well, I mean, you're nice getting a nice momentum here. Where do you see yourself going in here in this division and how fast do you want to move? Uh, real quick, because I want in the tournament. I want to go in the tournament. What I, know, what I have now showed was a, was a spectacular fight, but when you put me in the tournament with the heavy guys, bro, that's killing. All right, Rotterdam, let's hear it for your winner, the favorite here, Nabil Kahab. He's always got a smile on his face, too. He's a lovable 300-pounder. And he's got cardio for days. You get that guy in the tournament, he may not knock people out, Joe, but he might outlast them. Oh, yeah, he'll wear you down from start to finish. Talented, young. What surprised me, we're not understanding. 22 years old. That's insanity to me to see someone so young, so confident in the heavyweight division. We are just minutes away now from the top of the hour and glory collision five as we look at the fight card, ladies and gentlemen. We have four world title fights out of the six fights. Man, that's insane. I mean, you got to think Andy Semelier versus Jay Overmere, Visa versus Sirkan. We got some of the best, most talented kickboxers on the planet here for collision five. So welterweight, middleweight, and don't forget about the light heavyweights. Tariq Kebab is the other tank from Morocco, taking on his former friend, Mohamed Amin, and then the heavyweight interim championship of the world. The winner gets Rico later this year, Antonio Plazabat and Tariq Asaro.
One man standing. Two of the top five in glorious world light heavyweight rankings square off next in about Kabobe. He's blocking these punches with his face. The tank is back. for you, Hush. ladies and gentlemen, Mohammed Ali. If they give me somebody in the top five, I will be the master two years ago. I manifested. Look at me now. Right, right, right hand down the middle. Yeah. I give everything in the fight. That's my style. Kill be killed. I told you guys I would do it again, and I did it. And still, middleweight champion of the world! Serkan, stop talking, take the fight, and we'll see each other in the ring. How on earth has he not gone down? He is down! And I'm ready for everybody. Push! Oh, he goes! He goes! Earlier tonight, we had Serkan Askeglayan do well. No, he wants you, obviously. I want the title. Give me the title shot. Serkan won today, so the larger fight is uh, that I go against Serkan for the title. Robbie make it happen, and uh, I will win again. Over and out. I'm ready for everybody, this. Let's go. And now, welterweight champion of the world, Andy. Oh, 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 and there he goes, and that may do it. And a performance by Andy Similier. Who intrigues you in this division? I don't care. Bad news for everybody. Soldier just keeps coming forward, but here you go. Big left again. Overmere, welcome to glory. Ooh. Oh, this is the beginning. It's only the beginning. Jay Overmere remains on beat the glory. Jay Overmere calling for the champ. Rotterdam is the host for Glory Collision 5. Coming your way in just a few minutes, Joe. Four world title fights. Of course, the main event, the heavyweight interim title, Plazabat versus Kuki Asara. And I can tell you right now, there are Croatian soccer jerseys all over this arena. The crowd is going to be berserk. But the other three fights, yeah. Joe, of those three, which one do you think is going to be the most exciting? That's a tough one to say, but I'm going to go with Donathan Visa versus Oscar Lyon. Donathan Visa, one of the most technical fighters on the planet in any combat sports. Spectacular, technical, great IQ. Oscar Lyon, the power puncher, the aggressor, going to come forward, wants knockouts. So I think that fight has everything to be one of the best of tonight. I think the similar versus uh, Overmere close, fight close is, one is going to be exciting. It's a rematch, and both men promise this time they're going to do their best not to send it to the scorecards. Coming up at the end of the year, I mentioned it earlier, it's the Glory Grand Prix one-night eight-man heavyweight tournament. You heard the tank talking about, I want in, yep. I want in. The slots have not been completely filled yet, so still plenty of heavyweights still can qualify for this tournament. Let's learn more about it from its humble beginnings. 30 years ago, K1 made history with its first heavyweight Grand Prix tournament. It featured legends of the sport like Peter Ertz and Ernesto Hoost. But the winner, Branko Sikatic, summarized all that is best about the tournament format, going from underdog to hero in one night. Since its first event 11 years ago, Glory has continued the tradition of epic fight tournaments. Back then, 16 men fought their way from Stockholm to Rome through four tournament stages, with the winner taking home $300,000. Over the years, Glory's tournaments have provided some of the highlights of the sport. Two wins and two knockouts. Total in-ring time today for Michael Duke, 47 seconds. From old champions to future champions, new contenders to the last bow of legends. At Glory 4 Tokyo, Glory staged the biggest tournament in kickboxing history as Semi Shield entered the ring for the last time and took home the silverware. On the way, he beat a fresh-faced Rico Verhoeven and said that the future king of kickboxing was his hardest fight of the night. 
Verhoeven went on to win the Glory 11 Chicago Heavyweight World Championship Tournament, setting him on the path to an incredible 10-year reign at the top of the heavyweight division. Nothing can quite beat a tournament for launching a fighter into the stratosphere as they pit superstars against rising stars, giving everyone an equal shot at reaching the pinnacle of the sport in just a few steps. A few steps through the toughest opponents in the world. From knockouts to pitched battles, glory tournaments bring the drama every time. Now in 2023, we draw upon our past and take a huge new step forward into a new era of the glory tournament as we launch the inaugural Glory Heavyweight Grand Prix. Throughout the year, a series of qualifiers will select fighters for the biggest competition in kickboxing. At Glory 85, Tariq Cookie Asaro became the first man to win a place in the Grand Prix after battling his way through a four-man tournament. Sophie and Laduni followed with a win over Benjamin Adigbui at Glory 86. At Glory 88, one of the most experienced Grand Prix fighters of all time, Otter Hari, will face off against fellow veteran James McSweeney. The winner will take the next qualifying place in the end of year tournament, which will also feature two wild cards from the heavyweight roster. In December, the final eight fighters will meet in a tournament, and whoever has their glove raised at the end of the three fights in one night will be crowned the first Glory Grand Prix champion with a purse of $500,000. The heavyweight Grand Prix is back, and it's bigger than ever. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's coming your way at the end of the year in December. And here are the qualifiers so far. Tariq Asaro, who won that four-man tournament with two knockouts. Sophie and Ladini, the unanimous decision over Benjamin Adigbui that sent him in. Glory 87, ladies and gentlemen, back here in the Netherlands in August. Another one-night four-man qualifying tournament. And then in September in Paris, the winner of Botter versus James McSweeney is in. That's insane. To have Botter Hari potentially be in it is would be spectacular. Knowing the history of tournaments and kickboxing, that would just give everybody goosebumps. And I think it's great the fact that Badr Hari even wants to be in the tournament. He was talking about retirement the last time we saw him. So not only is he back in September, he wants to be back in December as well and try and win four fights in one night and that half million dollar prize. Yeah, I'm thinking about putting on some weight and asking <laughs> Robbie for half a million dollars. I'm yeah. in too. Really? <laughs> hey, I'll put some weight on. Why not? Yeah. Yeah, gain a little weight. Yeah, I'm trying. How about Kachab? He was talking about, I want to be in the tournament. I want to be in the tournament. We just announced we'll be back in the Netherlands in August with a four-man, one-night tournament. I think Robbie's going to throw him in that tournament. Why wouldn't you? I mean, he came out unscathed. He looked good. Great combinations. I think, like you said, he would be a great tournament fighter as well. He'd be a great wild card to be in there. One man, however, that doesn't get mentioned very often is the king of kickboxing. That's because Rico Verhoeven has been out of glory action for over a year and a half now. But don't worry. He's here and he's ready to come back soon. It's severe enough to, to get a surgery uh, next week, so multiple things are wrong. I got the call, like, he fucked his knee, and I was like, my friend was with me on the training. He, he told I look like somebody died. That was the look on my face, so very like yeah, sour taste in the mouth you know it's not the good news after the summer i should be ready Sounds fight ready it's been such a struggle for me mentally i was just disappointed in in my body, like, why, why now? Why now? I, I literally did everything I could do. They told me after surgery, believe me, you're gonna have pain. This is gonna hurt. At a certain point, I had to accept it, that this is the cards I've been dealt, so I have to play them. Now, I just like really fully in, in recovery mode and getting back uh, as world champion. I'm recovering, life is just moving forward and time flies by so fast, it's crazy. So it's so understandable that 
the whole sport and every, everybody in it is moving forward as well. I'm happy and thankful that they made the decision to do an interim title and not take my title from me because I think I've, well, I believe I, I've proven so much within the sport and there's been more moments that there have been more time than just 12 months within a title defense. So uh, I'm happy that, that this was the decision they made. And I also think that if they took my title and, and Antonio fought for it and he would, would have won, it didn't make any s sense for him to feel like a world champion because I've been beating everybody that, that he's been fighting now. So it doesn't make any sense. If I look at recovery wise and I take all the advice that everybody's given me that October, November definitely should, um, yeah, is an option. The king of kickboxing has a doctor's meeting in July. If that goes well, he is expected to face the winner of tonight's interim title bout later this year, perhaps November. Joe, you can see how decorated Rico is. Oh, yeah. Rico's been at the top since he started in the early glory days. So, I mean, you got to give him a little credit the way he's dominated for so long. That's not easily done. And very few in all combat sports did what Rico did and how dominant he has been for so long. Well, a lot of praise has been dumped on Antonio Plaza about lately, and I'm sure that may rub Rico Verhoeven the wrong way a little bit. Who do you think you prefer to face later this year, tonight's winner, Plaza Bot or Cookie Asara? Well, I think Plaza Bot gives him a tougher fight. He's a little bit more durable, a little bit more experienced, and I think that style of Plaza Bot will give him problems because he'll sit there in the pocket, take a few to give a few, and I think that's a very dangerous style, and we know how heavy hitting Plaza Bot is. So I think Plaza Bot would be the dangerous fight, but Cookie's wild, wiry, rangy, so anyone would be dangerous, but I think Plaza Bot's a tougher one. And Asaro, full of confidence himself. Remember, he won a one man, four man heavyweight tournament to qualify for this fight tonight. He's also in that end of year Grand Prix. So right now he's on cloud nine as well. Cannot wait for that main event tonight. Glory Collision 5, the interim heavyweight title on the line. Croatia's Antonio Plaza with a huge Croatian attendance here tonight. We'll be taking on Nigeria's Cookie Asaro. Here's how you can watch if you're in the United States. That's where I'm from. You can watch it on gloryfights.com. Of course, our great partner here in the Netherlands is Videoland. If you don't see your country on this list, just go to glorifights.com to find out where you can watch Glory Collision 5. Ladies and gentlemen, the time for talking is done. The prelims are over. It's time to eat the main card. Coming your way next, it's Glory Collision 5. against Antonio Plazibot. Man, that's going to be the hardest fight in my career. We had enemies from now on till the fight is done. Mohamed Ami! Yeah!